Today we're going to be talking about breaking free from the 9 to 5 grind. So currently I have not broken completely free. Kirby has. I am currently at about 50% passive income of my active income. So pretty much one of our salaries. Both my wife and I work. Um, but we're going to be going through step by step on how or what we did to actually reach that or achieve that and the steps maybe i'm taking currently to still go ahead and break free uh completely so step one kirby what did you do to the very first step that you took to get onto that path uh well for me i was i was heavily in debt i mean like I mean, in a couple of videos, we didn't share that many times. I was about $250,000 in debt with no job. You know, I left the military during the financial crisis, you know, June of 2007. And then I foolishly bought a house in December of 2007. I know I was just making, I was making worse goals to worse. I was, uh, you know, the heartbeat loans, you know, no income, no assets, no proof. They still let me get the house. But the first thing that I did was I had to stop everything that I was doing that was put that was putting me in the hole because it was just digging a deeper and deeper hole. I got the military I had uh, only had the debt of my car. And that was about another twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars. That was it. And then I ballooned it to two hundred and fifty. So the first thing I had to do was just stop everything that I was doing because I was doing the wrong damn thing. So, Alex, what was what was your uh, aha moment to get you started on this journey the first step i took and i still remember my thought process was i i, th I would say i quickly figured out because i was i just remember i was 18 and i had like this huge fear and i still do have this huge fear of being stuck at a job working at this job till i die and my thought was okay i need x amount of money i need like a big pile of cash to like not have to work and my thought was okay these are my bills per month if i had 10 of those i'm free for 10 months if i had 12 i'm free for a whole year so like that was my thought to it so i had quickly kind of realized like okay i need to not increase how much i'm having to pay out every month and then i started looking up videos on how to keep that low and saving so i kept my expenses low as possible and then i just stacked cash i mean my thought was if i had enough cash i could break free or i didn't know when i would get there because it was a lot of saving to do but you know that was my thought is like i just need a big pile of cash but what was your second step that you took well after i stopped doing everything that i was doing the thing was, I had to come to reality and look myself in the mirror and say, hey, what you know, don't work. You know, what you know, don't work. And then I had to have the humility to stop all the outside influences from affecting what I was doing also. So that come friends, that comes social media, that comes, you know, everybody's not on the same journey that you're on. Me, I was on a journey of, I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck my whole life. I don't want to be sitting here wondering how the bills are going to get paid. I'm, I don't want to sit here wondering, uh, will I have to make a payment plan if I ever can go on vacation one day in my life? You know, so it was exiting out all the external energy that was influencing me to do the, the crazy things, you know, buying the the watches, all the shoes, all the clothes, you know, hanging out, going to clubs all the times because those were the big expenses in my life because I was always out going out playing poker five, six times a week. And then what I mean by exiting out the outside influences is having those conversations. I mean, yeah, there was embarrassing conversations, but those conversations need to be had. I called the people that was closest to me that and then they didn't know that they was maliciously hurting me over my journey but i just told him i said hey this is the plan i'm on now and i'm going to have to stop doing the things that we was doing um and the ones that was true friends they 100 supported me they never called me again and said hey let's go do this let's go do this if they did call me and say 
let's do something that's either at their house let's just do something you know intimate just me and some friends we know we hang out at the house you know watch mma or something like that something that's done very cheaply because they respected the boundaries but a lot of people are scared to have that conversation because they're worried about what people say i was worried about what people said but i still had that conversation and then it showed who my friends and who wasn't and i just took the journey from there so alex after you um you know, you realized you wanted to, you know, pile a whole bunch of cash. And then you was wondering to that great number of how, um, how many millions you would need. So you, you would have to pay <laughs> bills again. What did you come up and realize after that? So I would say after that, the next step I started taking was like, I started trying to limit my crowd so or reduce the crowd i was hanging out with i quickly lost a whole bunch of friends and kind of just shrunk my circle and my circle was a lot of older people um that were i would say closer to retirement and then the fact that they were able to retire you know i asked them what are they doing how do they do that and so a lot of their advice was like, you know, just, you know, saving was, you know, the big one for them or putting money in your 401k. Their biggest regret was not starting earlier. So I figured, okay, that's good because I'm like 18, 19. Let me. You're, you're the earlier. <laughs> yeah, I'm the earlier. <laughs> Let me jump on this. So, um, you know, hanging out with them taking advice from them and then trying to that's also when uh i had met chris and i was trying to get in touch with you and i was trying to learn stocks i was trying to you know because i had seen people making income from it so i was trying to figure out good habits from people that have done it and then trying to find something that would boost my income. That was my, that was pretty much my second step. Yeah. And mine was, mine was similar. My third step was pretty similar to yours, but I didn't have the people that I knew that retired and could afford to retire. Um, I probably knew one person, but at retirement, they was, they were struggling real bad. So what I did was, and, and that's a good uh, avenue to go after what you did. So I didn't have that. So what I did was I just looked for blueprints from people that was already successful. For me, it was Dave Ramsey. I read the book Total Money Makeover and I just followed the blueprint to the hilt. I didn't do nothing sexy, nothing fancy. The thing that I did was and your step one is my step three is is I stopped spending money and live on as less as I as I made as least as possible to live on. And then all the extra money what i did was i just invested it in mutual funds that's that's it i know paying off debt paying off debt paying off debt and i I went investing uh, that's that's a little further down so i lived on less than i made first so everything was uh up to be cut you know electricity bills food bills you know like Dave Ramsey say, beans and rice, rice and beans. I was ramen noodle sandwiches the whole nine just to keep the cost low as possible. And then so that lower cost gave me more money to throw at the debt, throw at the debt. And then that's what I did. I mean, I, I've, uh, I had a volunteer to go to Iraq for a third time, even though I didn't have to go just because I didn't have a job and I needed some income. And then all the money that I made in the uh, army that last year, I threw it all at debt. I came back from Iraq with maybe like twenty, thirty dollars in the in my bank account because I threw it all at debt. I paid off all the credit cards, all the consumer debt, paid off my truck, and I actually I still had that truck for until what last year when I gave it to somebody else. But that was the thing I did. I just lowered my expenses, lowered my expenses, and took all that extra money and threw it at the debt just to get my head back just above water just so I could breathe. And then, yeah, I came back from Iraq with no money, but I had no debt besides the house, the liability that I lived in. And then that was, you know, you know, step four and five. We could talk about that in a minute. So what did you do after that, Alex? Yeah. And it's interesting that you bring up debt 
very early on i had seen people basically drowning in debt and i always had this idea of like okay if debt is going to reduce my net worth i don't want that and so i tried to stay out of debt completely and so i didn't have any student loans i didn't have any car loans credit cards nothing like that and but after that second step i was trying to because at that point i had started living on my own rather than with my parents and i was trying to realize because i started to see oh wow bills are a real thing you know there's rent and everything so i started trying to figure out ways to reduce my expenses that were like leisure so that i could save more of that money and get closer to like what i was saving when i was living at home and so i'm really a homebody person like i don't care to go out much um but my biggest thing was like i loved coffee and then at times i liked going to like the movies or food out to eat and stuff and so i just like it was funny because i that's when i had started watching like dave ramsey and that kind of got me on the path of like okay like there's like plans i could listen to like this is what these people are doing or this is what he's saying to do and then i started listening to graham stefan and for whatever reason i had no idea that like I thought iced coffee was only made at like a shop like you had to buy like I didn't know you can make it at home I don't know like I don't know why I thought that way but iced coffee obviously is like five six dollars a cup and I drink a lot of coffee and so that was a pretty good saving for me and um from there it was just like learning to cook more at home and I ate a lot of ramen noodles and it gets boring so I try to make it fancy and put like an egg in it or something. But, <laughs> but You're making those prison meals. <laughs> yeah. But um just that, just keeping expenses low, um just staying on top of it, you know, not trying to give myself any excuse of, oh now I you know, now I've moved out, I gotta celebrate, nothing like that. And just staying on top of it from from there. So what was your fourth, your fourth step? Uh, what I did after that. So I, I tackled the debt. I tackled the debt. Then I was finding to come back home. Uh, recession was still pretty much in vogue. Um, I got a job at the Toyota plant. I think I'm making $19 an hour or something like that. And then the only thing we had was the mortgage on the house. So the mortgage on the house was around $1,300, $1,400 at the time. But with my income and then my wife's income, we was able to pay the mortgage, but then we had a lot left over. And then that's when we started uh, investing the money into mutual funds. Uh, we didn't start off with the Roth IRA. We just started off with mutual funds because I was thinking, you know, I still had that mentality of, oh, something bad's going to happen. So I need to I need to have, you know, money readily, readily available. I wasn't scared to invest. I just... I just knew money, I needed money readily available. And then that's when, of course, I had to, you know, reread the total money makeup for things like that. And then I just thought of having a mutual fund. But so we, you know, had three or six months expenses in the savings account, but every dollar over that we was investing in mutual funds, investing in mutual funds. And then, um, and then we came up with this bright idea because we knew eventually that we was going to move, we was going to leave the state of Texas. So we said, why not and for people that don't know when the financial crisis hit the united states when all the housing prices were going down it didn't affect texas texas the values didn't go down so i mean it wasn't people buying houses but the values were still staying you know within par because homes at that time in texas was barely um fairly cheap and then so we was able to sell the house for exactly what we paid for it. We didn't make any profit from it. Um, we actually did a subject to to uh, investor. He took over the house payments and all that. And then he rented and they end up selling it to somebody else. But then we left that $1,400 a month mortgage and then moved into a $600 a month apartment. So that's around what $800 savings and that $800 in savings plus less utilities, less, you know, less everything all that money so $800 a month 
that's when we started investing in Roth IRAs and just that savings from 14 to 14 to six hundred dollars a month, eight hundred dollars a month. It was able to fully fund our Roth IRAs. And then that's how we start fully funding our Roth IRAs with that money. So all the extra money we saved, we didn't use it to say, oh, we got more money in the bank. We can go party. We can go hang out. We can go do this and that. We use it to invest more and more and more. So, Alice, what was your number four? So my number four from there would have been by that point. I think after that is when I had met you. And it wasn't until then where I, I think I had even told you early on, like I felt like you had given me like a blueprint. Like I knew what I wanted the whole time. I knew, you know, I didn't want to work at a nine to five for the rest of my life. I wanted X amount of money to be free, but I didn't know what to do to actually get out of that. I was trying to do cutting expenses, saving. And then from there, you kind of showed me by baby steps how to invest and that was like what I wanted to learn and so I, from there I had started investing and just so everyone understands because I'm sure there's other people that have the same mentality that I had but like when I started investing I thought like investing was like I thought the only way you had money is if it was saved so I thought like, oh, if I invest it, I lose it. And then I'm just betting that I'll get like a return on it. I didn't understand that you were like, because I think you were like, no, like the investment's still worth what you bought it for. <laughs> it's just going to bring you money. So like I didn't comprehend that. So I started learning investing from there. And that's when I started to kind of shift savings and then starting to see Okay, it's not how much do I need to have to live free. It's how much do I need to invest to make back as a monthly income from that investment to live free. And that's what started to slowly and gradually open my eyes. That was my step four. Yeah, and the people that notice the timeline, Alex on step four meeting me. I'm I'm a my step five. Alex probably still at his mama house at that time. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Well, matter of fact, he was. He was probably like three years old at the time. <laughs> but um, so when I get to step five, so now we're saving. We're saving. We're cooking. And then now it puts me in positions to make decisions. Like before, when I was broke, I was looking for any job. I mean, I was doing everything. Like those solicitors that knock on your door and ask for, ask, hey, can we give you a deal? I did everything. Anything that made a dollar, I was trying to do it. And uh, my wife still laughing at me today because of that. Because uh, one day I was out there training, trying to sell gutters in texas and uh i had on church shoes i walked about 10 miles in church shoes and i just called my wife and i said forget this man come pick me up i ain't doing this crap <laughs> but then but so then now we had money saved and then it gave us opportunities you know i wasn't out there just looking for any and every job you know i was i was out there looking for real opportunities i had the ability to say no to a lot of things and then like i said i was working at the toyota plant and then i got a phone call out the blue to give me an opportunity to make a lot more money than I was making. I mean, of course, the trade-off was I had to leave the country. I had to go to austere conditions. I had to put my life on the line again. But for what I wanted, it was nothing that was going to stop me. If I had to go put my life on the line to make sure that my family would be taken care of, I would do it any day of the week. If I rewound and did this all over again, I would still make the same choice. So now this time, number two, I put my life on the line. And then so I had to leave to go and live in Afghanistan for three years in a tent, no showers for months. But anyway, but that's what I did. But all the money that we made and when I was there, I had other people that was in the same line of work with me. They was going on expensive vacations, expensive trips, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. Vac I mean, twenty thousand dollar vacations. Me, every dime, we just stuck to the same process. Every extra dollar we had, we invested it. And then so we just kept investing, kept investing, kept investing. And then um, and then I, I used to get flack from the other guys that was doing the same job that I was doing. And they would say, they was like, man, you, you're too young. You don't know about this. You don't need to be saving, man. You could die tomorrow. And I was like, yeah, I was like that could happen. But the truth of it is, what if I survive and I spend it all? And they never got that concept and they just kept spending. They kept spending. I just kept saving and investing, saving and investing. 
and then um and then that's my transition to moving to florida so i knew i was moving to florida i called some people that i went to combat with back you know back in the day and they lived in florida and i said all right florida it is they thought i was playing and then i found the house online i found a house online that was for sale in a perfect neighborhood and then um my wife she was in the states at the time uh pregnant and she she came and seen the house and then i flew in we bought the house but again going back to your thing of what is stocks stocks is not something that's just going to lose money i mean you lose money when you put it in so when we bought the house only thing we did was we sold a portion of a stock that we was heavily invested in to pay for the house cash and then that's just you know setting us up to break free of that nine to five and and having the ability to say, okay, I could just sell this to buy, you know, shelter for my family forever. That was a great, you know, euphoric feeling for me. I mean, of course, everybody that I knew, nobody I knew ever paid off a house or bought a house cash. So, I mean, it was it was an eye opener for a lot of people when we did it. But that's just the way we went through the process. And but that's where we at. I mean, we got to, you know, you know. That step six in the process, you know, being, you know, heavily in debt to now being able to pay a house cash, that was, you know, that was one of the euphoric moments. And I haven't even gotten to all the other stuff that I do, but that was step six in my life. So, Alex, what is your step six? So, oh, this is my step five. But oh, your step five. Sorry. So, my step five was Kirby put me in the gulag. That was that was my step five. <laughs> So it was definitely felt like a entrepreneur boot camp, but it um I mean Kirby guided me all along and it was really just showing me, you know, what strategies to take and look at investing as a strategic thing, not as an emotional thing. And have a plan and know where your money's going, telling your money where to go. And stick to the same thing i mean i i would say like oh it was this step and then this and that in that process but it was really like here's what you got to do now just repeat it for the rest of your life like i mean it there's nothing too fancy about it it's just get money invest it get money invest it use that investment to buy more investments i mean and it's just repeating that repeating that and then eventually i mean wasn't until i guess last year that i got into real estate but it's all the same thing it was just like build enough capital and stocks to buy real estate and then it's just repeating that cycle and then eventually you know now we're at the point where like i said um our passive income makes up about 50 percent of our active income i would like it to be well even over a hundred percent before we decide okay if we want to leave our jobs we can but i know we'll get there uh eventually and it, i i know we'll get there in my goal is before 30 years old. So I'm currently 25 right now. But that is, that's where we're at right now. Yeah. And then, so, and then I'll just, I'll stop at uh, step six for me and I'll just wrap a whole bunch of steps in it. So when we got here and I bought the house, I sit here and stayed in the house for two years. I didn't have to work or anything. So I was already, I already broke the cycle of needing a job because we saved and invest, saved and invest, saved and invest. We, I didn't have the income component uh, to where I wanted to, where the income itself would pay for, you know, all the utilities and things like that. And then uh, after about two years, uh, I ran into a contractor who was just doing some remodels on the house that put those bamboo floors in that selling stomach. <laughs> um, and then he told me about rental properties. And I've, I've had... You know, family members invest in real estate and have rental properties, but all the um, family members that I knew and people that I knew that had rental properties, they really never had any money. So I was going to stick strictly to the stock market, strictly to the stock market. But I knew that real wealth was being able to have other people pay for your life. So right now I just had a pile of cash, but if I kept spending the cash, then the cash would just depreciate, depreciate. So what I did was I jumped into real estate, but I didn't do it any way that 
any of the people before me did it. So, you know, first couple pieces of real estate, I, I paid cash for. And uh, so now the cash was, so I paid cash for those. And then, so the money that was coming in, it was, I looked at it as, okay, now I'm just trying to get my money back that I put in. I looks like you looked at the stock market, like, oh, that's money lost. And then somebody, I came across a video or something say, well, no, you still have the asset. So I had that same moment that you had about yeah. the stock market or real estate. And then, so the money started coming in, money started coming in. And then slowly but surely, the money started covering the other bills, the utilities, the cell phone bills, the car insurance, and things of that nature. And then, and then so, but I, I still wasn't doing that because my wife was still working. And then so she can cover those bills. So I was just using that money to, you know, pour that money to buy another property, buy another property, buy another property. And I kept doing it that way, you know, taking money from the stock market, buying properties. Then I started leveraging using finance. You know, that's when I kind of broke away from the Dave Ramsey mode on when it came to investing. But when it came to personal finance and just saving money, living less than you make, I always will hold those as key core components in my life. And then so I would I started leveraging and then my portfolio just started growing. And then eventually uh, we, you know, with the money coming in, we you know with the cash flow from the properties, then it was able to pay for, you know, our lifestyle, pay for all the utilities and everything here now. And and then from there, I was happy to say my wife, she was able to retire at the age of 39. And then usually for the people that don't know, usually people that retire from the military, they have to get another job because the income that they make for retirement doesn't cover their lifestyle. My wife retired and she just do what she wants. You know, my wife's a hustler. She's just like Alex. So she created some more businesses and things like that to occupy her time just to bring more money. But our lifestyle as a whole is not dependent on the income from a job. It's all dependent on or predicated on uh, passive income that comes from different avenues and that's real estate that's businesses that we own that's uh, selling call options and those are the things that fund our life so the extra money that comes in is just money set inside to we invest more in stocks we invest more in real estate we invest more in business um with alex we we'll talk about it i'm working on a deal now and i think i called you last night about working on uh, buying a big plot of land but those are the things that we're doing, but it's all other people paying for our lifestyle. So it's, I thought like Alex that I just needed a huge sum of money. I just needed millions. And then, and then that will just pay for my life. But real, real wealth is having other people pay for your life. So you just produce, uh, buy things that produces revenue that produces cash flow, and that cash flow will take care of your life. It pays for our vacation. It pays for any cars that we want to buy and things like that. But we don't buy much because we don't drive a lot. It pays for our travel and things of that nature. But that's where we at. And that's just a step-by-step -step process that me and Alex took to get to where we at. And this is can be easily replicated. This can be done by anybody and everybody. We didn't do nothing fancy. You see, we didn't talk about degrees. We didn't talk about uh, going to uh, master classes. We didn't talk about going to, you know, real estate meetups, which those are good, you know, just to network with people. But those those are the, the simple processes, the simple steps that go through that anybody can do. We are not special. Uh, Alex, your your education level is what again? So people know. Got a high school diploma. High school diploma. I'm just a, a dumb knuckle dragger that want to go out there and fight fight wars and get into combat and all that other stuff i mean yes i do have a degree in finance but i was already in by the time i got the degree i already had i was already investing and i already paid for my house and everything else so the degree was more for uh just so i can tell my kids that they need to go to school that's when i was still when i didn't understand what cash flow meant but that's the only reason why I got the degree. It, it didn't make me not one penny in my pocket. I was already on the process doing what I had to do. And it just really came from learning from people that's already out there, following the blueprints that's already out there and not trying to recreate the wheel. But Alex, you got anything else to wrap it up before we close it out? I know we wrap ran along on this one. 
yeah, we'll wrap it up there. With all that being said, guys, hit the like button. Uh, leave us a comment down below. Share this video. Subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next one.